welcome. We have our first official snow day of this, the year and the school season. <laughs> Chelsea's coming downstairs right now. Um, I'm gonna take her to school and then I get back and then I take Ashley to school and I get back. Luckily, Abby can just take herself to school. Um, Jason went skiing. His foot, you guys, I think I mentioned it yesterday. Literally, just like out of nowhere, he gets out of the shower. He's kind of limping in the shower still. He's kind of like being careful with it. He gets out of the shower two nights ago and he's like, my foot doesn't hurt. So he's like, well, I'm gonna go skiing on Friday. So he's skiing right now and we'll see how well um, it does, see how, we, how it holds up. I mean, they probably got a ton of good snow up there. But I'm setting up to work here at my desk. I've got a little candle lit. But I had to take Chelsea to school first um, and then work. Oh, I didn't show you this. I'll have to have her talk about it. But they got the award from their last competition. Um, and each kid, the, the coach has had so many of these because she's been a coach for like 20-something years. And so she lets the kids each take a turn kind of having it for a week um, in between getting awards or whatever so she was given that award to hold on to until her next call. sorry about that apparently I have like every battery that's dead <laughs> so oh it's not focused there we go I don't know what I was saying um but I'm gonna come back and get some work done um Jason has a guy's night tonight I'm not invited to go do that even though I really like hanging out with <laughs> the guy he's hanging out with I'm like can I come can I come and hang out with you guys? It's fun because like normally he comes over to our house and so I actually get to hang out with them and they won't let me go. <laughs> I don't know, I'm a party, I'm a FOMO when it comes to those two. I like to hang out with him. I like to hang out with his wife too. I just enjoy talking to him. Okay, Chelsea, you ready? Second time getting ready for school. Those are your new pants. You only see, I only see you for a split second when you came home from, come home from school and it's straight into shorts. You know, it's like 20 degrees outside. Yeah. You're gonna be warm enough? Yeah. You don't have like recess, so you're fine. No. Okay. Really... Can't see us very well. Yeah. We are doing school drop off number two. I took Chelsea just really quick this morning. Um, and your friends are all up here as the crossing guards, aren't they? You gonna say hi? Okay. Are they all texting you too? Yeah. So we have two hour late start, so it's 10, 11 o'clock already. <laughs> We're just sitting in the drop off lane waiting to drop her off. I'll be right back at it in three hours to pick Chelsea back up. <laughs> it's not a waste of a school day and it's not a waste that we don't have to make it up. That's nice. That's the nice thing about two hour delay or two hour early let out. If like the snow storm would have hit oh, yesterday my. afternoon. Ella sent me this video. What? What better age than four to start your skincare and makeup collection? So that's exactly what we did today. Today okay, I took her home to Sephora and told her she could get whatever she wanted. The whole ten year old and Sephora thing is. No, but she's a toddler. She's four. I know. I understand that. Anyway. Yes, yeah, so we're all like joking about it and like. Oh I know. Because you are the ten year olds in Sephora. Just. Yeah, but I don't no. have like a whole skincare routine. I know you don't. <laughs> I'm like, the only one who doesn't. I know. Her. You have a, a body scrub and that's it. Yeah. Anyway, I don't even have any errands to keep running in Is between it? like doing all these pickups and drop offs. I don't, I literally don't have anything. Have one to call. You want to get a haircut, but I haven't been home long enough to even schedule that hair point appointment and she's bugging me so bad about it. Because I really, I really want it. I know you do. But I'm let me not be in a carpool lane to drop off kids and then I'll have time to do it. I'm scared because it's like not the normal place I go and if they mess up it's like oh. I know that's why it makes me nervous too because you're not just getting a chop off the bottom. It's like you're but actually those, getting those, a she wants cut. like She I wants want a, a little bit of a cut. She wants a little bit of layering around her face but those those initial pieces need to be long enough to pull back into a ponytail and she wants me to just clip them in every time she does a ponytail for cheer and I'm like I'm not doing it it's not gonna work like you want it to work you just get a pound of gel and do it I know that's what our cheer don't want your is. hair to be like damaged it already is from all the hairspray I use I don't I know but that's why I got the wax and you didn't even take it to your last competition because it doesn't it only works while I'm doing it it doesn't work for it's like anyway wax. anyway anyway blah 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 it works. And it's like, it meant for like a daily, like just for like the No, day. it's meant to slick back your hair like yes, you do. Yes, but it's not meant to be like rolling on the ground, like uh, catching your okay. kid. And like, okay. All right, I'm sitting in the parking lot of my favorite place. You can see 
Where's the golden arches? They're right there. I haven't gone to get anything yet, but I thought I would talk to you guys um, really quick. I don't really know where this day is going in general. I just know how my feelings are right now. I'm having a hard time right now. So I just, I'm trying to pull up something I just read on Facebook that kind of helped me like wrap my head around how I'm feeling right now. I don't mind taking my kids where they need to go, especially like we're on a snow route and I don't want them to have to like sit at a snow route bus stop and wait in the cold and you know, the, the bus schedule is never going to be on time. And anyway, so I've been taking the kids to school, took Chelsea, came home, had 45 minutes, took Ashley, came home, had 45 minutes to an hour. And then I thought I was going to be fine. I thought Kaylee or Abby was going to be able to take Kaylee's car and it just, it, I'm not going to go into it. It didn't work that way and and that's fine it's not fine but i en ended up needing to take abby but it's such a short t class period for her that i need to just sit and wait which is why i'm sitting here in the parking lot waiting to get a drink but in the middle of kind of a frustrating moment with our kids um and I, again i'm not going to go into that it's fine it's it's our own issues with our own kids it just it felt um a little overwhelming for me not that the it's not hard for me to like sit in a car and drive around. It's not even snowy. Like it's not even like that that's a difficult thing. It's that, well, let me just read you this quote. It says, I often hear that you can't pour from an empty cup, but as a mother, you can and you do because even if you have nothing left to pour from, you find a way to, you find a way for them, your kids. Um, Like I said, I don't mind helping my kids. I don't mind sitting in a really comfortable, nice car. It's warm. I don't have to worry about running out of gas or paying for gas or not having entertainment. I can sit and watch any number of shows. I actually should bring a book. I should bring my stack of books, which is the other part of this conversation. It's that I'm not doing what I need to get done myself. Um, today, in general, I don't actually have anything that I need to get done. It's things that I wanted to get done. I want to read a stack of five books that I really want to read. I want to sit and watch a movie on Netflix. I want to go to a see, go and see Boys in the Boat at the movie theater with friends or with Jason or alone. I don't, I don't really care, but I can't do any of that now. And it's not woe is me and that, you know, whatever it is, what it is. It, it's just, um, and I'm, again, I'm willing to help my kids because that's my number one priority is just feel today. I don't think it would have felt the same way. And this is not a dig at Jason. Like, and, and if he's watching this, he, he's going to know because I'm going to have a conversation when he gets home. This is not a dig at him and what he is doing right now. It just feels harder given these feelings when he's off skiing and doing something fun. And that makes me feel guilty because he deserves to do something fun. <laughs> he deserves to go and enjoy time with his brother doing something he really, really likes to do because he works really, really hard at work. When he works really, really hard at home, it's not when he's home, he's there for us or his Legos. <laughs> it's not that he's not there for us. He deserves to go and have fun. It's hard because I'm not getting to do something fun at the same time. And life doesn't work that way. I know that that's not a logical way of thinking. I did have it in my head today. I'm like, well, if he gets to go do something fun, I'm gonna go sit in a movie theater by myself and do something fun for myself. It didn't work out, right? That's fine, it's not the end of the world. It's just um, when, when it's hard, when the moments are hard is when it feels unfair. It feels unfair as a parent to have the responsibility of dealing with kids that are hard in the moment when you're not only not able to do the things you need to or want to and have fun, but that your other spouse is having fun and not having to deal with the hardship of parenthood. He will when he gets home. <laughs> I guarantee you the issue is not done. Anyway, I don't know where I'm going with my thoughts on this. Um, I just just had like these this moment of like, this isn't fair. Like I don't mind driving around and like taking care of the kids, but like it just, just pity potty moment. But it, I don't feel like my cup, my, my mom cup is empty. I really, really don't. Even during the moments of helping Abby after her surgery, you find a way to fill that cup back up at three in the morning to help. I think the cup that's empty for me is social and connections with people and I have connections with friends and connections with 
people around me, that circle is very, very small right now on purpose. I've had to shrink that circle down to people that I can trust and that I really care about myself and want to be there for myself um, because they are there for me. It's that their lives are busy and they're good people themselves and so they're taking care of their kids and their families and their life just as good as I probably am. And so it's hard when you don't get to connect to the people that you connect with because they're busy too. It's nothing on them. And if you're watching, you know who you are. There's, it, there's no guilt in that. It's just some days you feel lonely. Some days you just feel lonely. Jason is on the phone with me because he's right behind me with our right. wonderful Honda Pilot. And Jace, you want to tell everyone what's wrong with our Honda? Uh, nobody knows. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> There's nothing wrong nothing. with it. I don't know. They ran a bunch of tests and he said they don't appear to know anything. Nothing's drawing, nothing. He's like, there's no codes. And I'm like, is that because it went dead? He's like, yeah, that'll do it. I'm like, okay, well, that was the problem. <laughs> All right, well, but it's fine, and we didn't have to pay anything, so. We didn't have to pay anything. Uh, Thank you, Honda. Maybe, maybe we should replace the battery, but we have to get a special battery. I heard him Anyways. say that. Okay. All right, well. Uh, oh, she needs gas. You go, um, you have your Costco card? I think so. Treat her to a tank of gas. I'm going to go get Ashley from the snow route. Even though okay. there's no snow. Okay, I'm not really sure how much more I can handle today. I was second in line. And I can't give a lot of details about where our kids bus snow route is. But I was second in line for the bus snow route. It's a very busy area. It's a very, very busy place. But we all have a very safe place to park. And then we have a sidewalk on our side of the street where the buses are supposed to park in order for all of us to get out of our cars or our kids who are old enough to just walk up to our car because they recognize us. But the kindergartners have to stay on the buses until their parents come to get them. Okay? They, like, that is normal. For 15 years, she's at that we head. have been doing this snow route, okay? I'm shaking. I'm beyond mad, okay? And so... This little kid, this little kid right here. All these random kids just walking home. I can't even. These kids not even knowing where their kid, their parents are. Do we know who this kid is right here? No, but like. And this parent ahead of me. Kudos to them. Get in the car. Take them home. I'm second in line for this snow route. And the car, one car ahead of me. And we're just lined up down the street. Okay, all these cars. We've been doing it this way for 15 years. Um, for, I, I literally have had the same snow route. Even though we've lived in multiple places, it was the same snow route. All of a sudden, we see the buses turn in front of us where they're not supposed to turn. They're supposed to go park in front of us in a certain area. All of them line up together, and then we all walk down and we get our kids off of all the buses available for our area. And you just pick a bus for the kids, they just get on a bus, go to the same area and then you all get off at the same spot the parents pick you up on your way but the buses decided not to do that today they decided to take it upon themselves beyond transportation department rule and pick their own stop which happened to be at a middle school where there's no parking they parked in an area there's no parking for kids for parents and we were like they parked in the bus lane 
where there's no parking Kinder for the parents. were crying because they're like, my yeah. parents don't know what to do. Like, I don't know how to call them. Like, trust me. Like, yeah. So I because I was because I was second in line. The bus driver, the first bus driver that drove past me, rolled his window down, and I yelled at him and I said, "Where are you going? You're going the wrong way. You're supposed to park right here in front of me." And he's like, "I don't want to. That's not safe." And I said, "Because you're going the wrong direction." right where you're at you're gonna have four lanes of, of road for these kids to cross but if you had parked on the correct side of the road i'm sorry i'm really worked up right now you wouldn't be in the wrong spot and he yelled at me and he was like well i'm not gonna park here i'm gonna go up to the middle school beyond beyond and then they just let all the kids just get off the buses and the parents are all having to turn around and like find where he went to drop them all off and one kid at my bus stop, she was like, I don't know where my mom is. Like, she's she in kindergarten. Like, and I'm like, I can take you if you like, I know where you like you live. You live down in, I'm yeah, like, say, and I'm like, I can take you too. And she's like, and I, and then I was like, oh, I she know was her. Crying. Like, I can take her. I can take her. So I took her off the bus until I saw her mom. Yeah. And then I took her to her mom because she was crying. Right. She was like, so crying. Whoa, beyond. So I didn't even have a place to park. I'm parked in the middle of the road on a street very near where the buses ended up parking, but none of us can get to where the buses are parked. And so these kids are just getting off the bus. They let all the kids off the bus without checking to make sure that they have a parent to, to pick them up, but they keep the kindergartners on the bus, but the parents have no way to get down to where they're at to take the kids off the bus because we are parked in the middle of the road. It was just the most ridiculous thing ever. No I see my out. friends, kids, just walking, and one of them almost walked across a four-lane road. And I'm like, Lincoln, stay on the sidewalk. And he's like, I don't know where to go. I don't know where my mom is. And I'm like, okay, just stay right here. Anyway, I immediately, like, I got myself in a place where I was, like, parked. I'm in the middle of the road, but I'm parked. I'm fine. But, like, I called the transportation department, and I was like, I don't know if you were aware of this. I don't know if you changed it, but I have no email saying that you changed the snow route. This bus driver took it upon himself to do this. Absolutely unsafe. Absolutely not cool. Like, obviously, none of the parents got the message because we're all lined up in our normal route. We're all on our phones, and people are like, no, I'm just Yeah, kids were texting their parents, Mom, we're not going to the normal spot. So then the parents are like, where is the bus driver taking my kid? Dead. Dead. So then I find my friend, Lincoln's mom, and she's going the wrong direction. I'm like, turn around, turn around, go up here. Beyond, beyond mad. Literally had just gotten home and I forgot that I had made an appointment to get this girl's haircut done 10 minutes ago. <laughs> we're for this day to be done. <sighs> so we're gonna go, I called them and they were like, we can fit you in, it's okay. Um, so you we're gonna go get your hair. Yeah, I was they just did everything against protocol. Was... Absolutely everything against protocol. Letting kids off the bus in an area. My, Jason said he came up um, past the original, the actual snow route, and there's parents sitting there in their cars, like, "Where's our kids? We don't understand because it's not obvious where the bus is actually parked." Because there's normally buses parked at the middle school, so. Parents wouldn't think anything of it. They're like, that that's where our elementary school kids are. Like, it wouldn't make any sense to think that that's where your kids are. Kids are walking home alone. Yeah, there's kids walking home alone. Like, <sighs> it was like weird because when I, I was like, he was like, well, we're gonna get him on, off at a different stop. Like, so he was telling you that the he, whole way home. No, he was like, and then he's like, tell your parents when you guys get home, this is the stop now. Are like, you kidding me? He just decided right and then. And they were like, well, this isn't how it's been for like, well, like my sister's been going here for like four, 18 years. Like, well, 15. we've been doing this for like 13, I 13 guess, 13 years. years. Like, it's never been this way. And he's like, well, we've ch decided to change it. And I'm like, who, You don't like, get to change it mid-route. Do yeah, that. you don't get to change that. Oh, and they also... Okay, my battery's about to die. Um, okay, your hair now, while well, you have a, a, pon a ponytail. Show how long it is. And it's straight, it's all one length. Yeah, I hate it. We might not have battery until we get back home. So, but that's how long it is now. And we'll show you the after as soon as I get home and get a new battery after we get a haircut. Yeah. Because that's how my life is right now. Yeah. Okay, we have a little battery left. 
I can actually like add a little bit. I can't believe I just paid 25 bucks for what she did, but we did cut off the bad ends. And then I might, I can take some, I take a yeah. little sliver. Cause it's like but let's get it, let's get it cleaned. And I mean, it actually is pretty clean. You've been washing it good this week. It's but not, also let's curl it. Let's see what it really does. Like visible. I would want it to be more visible because it's not like. Well, let me see what I can do. It. I'm. I can add a. No, I can add a little bit. I, I'll just take some sliver. Yeah, because like what? I can't go much higher. That's the problem. What the person did in the video, they like trimmed it like that, but she just went like that. Yeah, it's okay. Side note. I am really glad that I'm just using my nice warm car all day, I guess, because it's 21 degrees outside all day. It's been 20s. So at least I have my warm car. I'm fine, but we made a decision. I made a decision when I was coming, going to Ashley's haircut, that I'd either come home and crawl into bed in a fetal position, or we go do something. So we are at Tipsy Cow. So I said, let's go do this. So you don't have to he, he, he suggested Tipsy Cow for dinner, burgers, like warm rice burgers. And then I suggested to go see Boys in the Boat. So we're gonna go dinner and a movie, and then go home and go to bed. Pull into your driveway, it's a Saturday night. You look like a million bucks wearing that dress I like. You're smiling, but there's something missing in your eyes. Girl, I can tell that you have something on your mind. But I will make you forget all your sorrows. Let go like there's no tomorrow. Okay, definitely improved our spirits of the day, didn't it? It was a very nice experience. I'm glad you had came up with that idea. I love you. I came up with the movie and you came up with the dinner. Ah. Yeah. Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> Especially given the fact that we saw Boys in the Boat. Such a good oh, show. It's a great show. It's a great book. Cried. Book or a real book. You should read the book. Yeah, you should read the book before you see the Ooh, movie. It's cold. It is 17 degrees out here. We are not used to the cold. Are you driving? I'm driving. I can drive. Um, How about you back out? Okay. Can you? Well, all right. Well, we're going to say goodnight to you. It's been quite a day. Um, thanks for helping me get through my day in some ways. You guys helped me, um, even though, you know, you're not right here with me, but you are in spirit and I think of you guys. Well, again, the Tesla, it's wonderful when you can like preheat it when you're still in the movie theater. So take care you guys and we will see you guys next time.